Asquikwasani Tampawag, welcome back to Tamaquag Museum's Children's Hour. This is our second Children's Hour program, and as before, this is going to be available for one week starting today. So make sure you take a look at it and make sure you share it with all of your friends. And if you take our challenge at the end, please share your videos or pictures with me because I'd really like to see what you've done. I have a special book that I'm going to be sharing with you today, and it's called Strawberry Thanksgiving. Let me see if I can pull it up on my screen. Here it is. Now this book is really special to me because it was written by two of our own community members. This book was written in 1992 and it was published as part of a collaboration with the Boston Children's Museum. And they did a set of books called the Multicultural Celebrations and this was one of them. And it's no longer in print, so you can't get this in the store. However, I have really exciting news. Tamaquag Museum has gotten permission to republish this book, so we're hoping to be able to bring it back, um, hopefully within a year, so that way you can check it out. In the meantime, please enjoy this story. The author of this book is Paula Dove Jennings. She's actually my cousin. I'm really proud to be able to share this story that she wrote. The illustrations in this book was done by Ramona Peters. Now, Paula Dove Jennings is a member of the Narragansett Indian tribe, and Ramona Peters is a member of the Mashpee Wampanoag, and that's the community right to the northeast of us. And they are our relatives, they are our friends, and we're really um, pleased that they were able to bring together both of their talents to make this beautiful book. This photograph down here is a picture from our archives of Paula Jennings when she was just a little girl. She is now an elder in our community and she shares her gifts and her knowledge with us. She has worked at the Tomaquag Museum for many years and she now helps us out by coming back and teaching us new things and sharing all of her wealth of knowledge with our community. If you've been to the museum, you might have seen her before because she still comes and does storytelling. She's a really very gifted storyteller and she has a great voice for storytelling. Hope I can be as good a storyteller as her one day. Ramona Peters is a wonderful artist and educator and a culture bearer for her tribal community. And there's some links here that I've shared that you can check out and learn more about her. Now let's see. In the back of the book, Strawberry Thanksgiving, there is a glossary. And a glossary, if you don't already know, is like a little dictionary. And it tells you the meaning of the words that you will hear in the story so that you can understand them. So in the book, the glossary is at the end, but I want to share it at the beginning. That way you would already know these words before you hear them in the story. So the first is Father Sky, and that's a name that's used to show respect for the sky. Grandfather Sun is a name. Oops. It went too fast, sorry. I'll get used to this one day. Grandfather's son is a name that shows respect for the sun. And the great spirit is like a supreme being. He's our God. He lives in the sky world and he looks down on us. Um, we often call him creator because he created all the things around us. Um, that's our great spirit. Then we have Mother Earth. And Mother Earth is a name that we use to show respect to the earth. We call the earth our mother because she takes care of us. And we just celebrated Mother's Day and we celebrated our own mothers. And we celebrate them because they do so much work. They give so much of themselves. They nurture us, they feed us, they shelter us. They give us everything that we need. And that's what the earth does for us. And so we call her our mother and we show her that same respect. Then we have the word regalia. And regalia are a traditional clothing that's used for ceremony. Um, there's lots of different styles of regalia. Uh, it can differ based on what tribe you're from because when people make their regalia, they're using the resources that are around them. So whatever they have available is what's going to be part of the regalia that they put together. So people who live out west have different regalia from people who live on the east coast based on what resources we have available. Um, 
Our regalia can also be influenced by the styles of dance that we do, the type of ceremony that we're attending. Um, this uh, regalia that you might wear to certain ceremonies and that are meant for prayer versus regalia that you would wear to like a powwow where you're going to be dancing. Um, and at a powwow when you're dancing, you're wearing different regalia based on what style of dance you do. So there's lots of different styles of regalia. And regalia has also changed over the years. Uh, if you look at pictures from 100 years ago or paintings and illustration from two or 300 years ago, you might see that the regalia looks different from the regalia that we wear now. And that's again related to the resources that we have available to us. There are certain materials that we have access to now that we didn't have a long time ago. And we can use those materials in our regalia now. So it's always evolving and changing. And Native people are really creative, and really artistic, and they're gonna use whatever they can find in new ways. And you see that in our regalia often. This picture was from Tamaquag Museum's annual honoring. And all of these dancers represent different parts of the United States. And they were sharing their talents with us. Um, so you can get a good example of all of the different styles of regalia right from this one picture. Then we have reservation. And reservation is land that was designated as owned by Indian nations by the United States government. So when Europeans came and settled here, when they formed the United States of America, they took the land from the Native American people. And after we lost all of our land, um, the government set aside certain property for native tribes to reside on and use. And this land is called our reservations. In Charlestown, Rhode Island is where the Narragansett Reservation is. And this is a picture from our reservation. This shows our stone drum. Um, we called it a drum. I don't know where that name came from. It was actually built by my grandfather and his sons. And it was where we used to have powwows a long time ago. Um, but they have since moved the powwow gatherings to the big field that we have. But it used to be on this circle, so I think it's a really cool picture. Then we have a picture of Deep Pond on our reservation. And there's lots of stories that people can share with you about visiting Deep Pond and swimming here and fishing here. Um, elders can even tell you about when they used to have to bathe here. And it's a really deep and very beautiful pond. Um, so we still like to enjoy that today. And this is a picture of the spring. And the spring is a fresh water spring. You can actually drink this water and it's nice and clean and fresh and cold. And this is on our reservation and it's a spot that's very special to us. And the reason I wanted to show you this picture is because in the story, the grandmother shares a, um, a traditional story down by the spring. And the author of this book, Paula Jennings, I know she was thinking of this spring when she wrote that part of the story. Then we have ribbon shirt. And ribbon shirt is a shirt that's trimmed with ribbons and it can be worn for everyday use or for special tribal occasions. And this particular picture here is a ribbon shirt that was worn by Tecumseh. And he is from the Shinnecock Nation in New York. He came to the Tamaquag Museum as an educator and an artist with a group called Ibex Puppetry. And they did a really awesome program with the children. And this is a photo from that. And that is his ribbon shirt. Ribbon shirts can come in lots of different colors. And the materials that you use, the colors of the ribbon can represent different things based on your tribe um, and based on your community. So uh, you'll see them in lots of colors. Then there's sassafras tea. Sassafras tea is one of my favorite teas and it is made from the roots of the sassafras tree. So this tree right here is just a small one but this you would be able to pull up out of the ground and the roots would smell like kind of like root beer and if you clean those roots and you boil them in some water it makes a really delicious tea. Then we have Strawberry Thanksgiving, and that's a celebration that we observe usually in June because that is the month when the strawberries ripen. So that's our strawberry moon, and we would celebrate the gathering of the strawberries and the big harvest. It's one of the first fruits that come out in springtime, so late spring, early summer, sorry. 
And this is a picture from our archives of one of the posters from a strawberry Thanksgiving that they had a long time ago at Tomaquag Museum. I think this one probably comes from the late 70s. Then we have succotash. And succotash is a dish that's made with corn and beans. And depending, you can use different types of corn, you can use different types of beans. This particular dish of succotash right here was made by our executive director, Lorenz Spears. You can also add things to the succotash to make it even heartier. You can add meats, um, you can add squash and kind of turn it into a three sisters succotash. It's really delicious. Then we have Wampanoag, Nipmuc, Mohegan, Niantic, and Narragansett. And those are the names of tribes in Southern New England that are all around us. So without any further ado, this is Strawberry Thanksgiving by Paula Dove Jennings with beautiful illustrations by Ramona Peters. At dawn, Adam stood facing the east under the old pine tree, just as grandmother had taught him. Grandfather's son finally rose his head to bring sunlight to Mother Earth. The day of Strawberry Thanksgiving had begun. Adam ran to the house and slipped into his chair at the kitchen table. Strawberries, he said, looking at his sister Holly. Silently, she passed him the bowl of berries. Sugar, Adam demanded. Did you ever learn please, Holly asked as she passed the sugar. Or thank you, his mother said from the sink where she was hulling strawberries. Adam, have you finished your chores? His dad called from the front porch. Father stood surrounded by bundles of blankets, jugs filled with sassafras tea and lemonade, and baskets filled with regalia he was loading into the truck. Holly hasn't done her chores, Adam said, coming to the door. His dad just looked at Adam. He was disappointed. Adam grumbled as he went to his room. He pulled up the bedspread and punched the pillows and kicked his pajamas under the bed. Through the open window, he saw his sister sweeping the porch. She was talking and laughing with grandmother. <laughs> She's probably telling Holly one of her great stories. It's always Holly, 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 Adam said to himself. Adam, his mother called. He quickly slipped on the ribbon shirt that grandmother had made him. She had decorated it with red and blue ribbons from Mother Earth and Father Sky and yellow and green ribbons to salute grandfather's son and all living things. He rolled his moccasins, clamshell necklace, and sash up into a bundle and went downstairs to the kitchen. His mom was packing up freshly baked shortcakes while grandmother sprinkled sugar over huge bowls of strawberries. Holly was sitting by the back door putting on her moccasins. As Adam walked past Holly, he yanked one of her braids hard. Startled, she kicked out her foot, tripping him. He hit his head on the doorknob and blood trickled down his forehead. Mom, Holly tripped me on purpose. Holly's eyes filled with tears and a slow smile twitched on Adam's face. Grandmother put a bandage on his cut. She was not smiling. Adam and Holly waited on the porch while mother and grandmother collected the shortcakes and strawberries. I will have a talk with Adam, mother said. No, said grandmother. Maybe he will remember how to treat others and just what this Thanksgiving is all about. Grandmother drove the family to the reservation where everything was ready for the strawberry Thanksgiving. Under shade trees, tables were covered with bowls of strawberries, plates of shortcakes, and crocks of whipped cream in buckets of ice. Here's a beautiful picture of what it would have looked like at that strawberry Thanksgiving. Trays of sandwiches sat on other tables along with bags of popcorn. A huge pot of succotash slowly warmed on a portable grill. Many people came to the festival. Wampanoag, Nipmuc, Mohegan, Niantic, Narragansett, as well as many non-native friends. Many brought crafts or foods to sell. Strawberry shortcake, my favorite, Adam said as he jumped out of the car. One shortcake, please, please, he said, dropping his money on the first table. 
As Adam scraped the last of the shortcake crumbs and cream out of the bowl, he saw his sister straighten her leggings under her knees. She was wearing a dress that had been their great-grandmother's. Adam walked to Tall Pine's table. He looked over the beaded necklaces, carved wooden pieces and wire rings. He picked up a small basket. How much? Eight dollars and fifty cents. Oh, too much. I only have two dollars. Adam picked up a small smooth stone. It had perfect red strawberries with feathery green leaves painted on it. How much? It's two dollars, said Tall Pine. But it's early yet and I'll have spent all my money. I'll tell you what. Take this pail to the spring and bring me back some fresh water. Then you may have the stone for one dollar. Adam snatched the pail and ran down the shaded path to the spring. When he returned, he gave Tall Pine the water and his dollar bill. Tall Pine handed Adam the stone and he slipped it into his back pocket. Then he ran back to the spring. Grandmother was sitting there on a rock surrounded by a group of children. I am about to tell the strawberry Thanksgiving legend, she said. Oh, I want to hear it too, Adam said, sitting down behind her. So grandmother began the story, speaking from her heart and her memories. Many moons ago, a girl and her brother were the best of friends and did everything together. One day, the girl and her brother went for a walk in the woods. They followed a new path that had many twists and turns. Suddenly, they came to a fork in the path. The girl said they should go one way, and her brother said that they should go the other. They argued. Finally, the girl stomped down the path of her choice, and her brother followed the other trail. As she walked along, she made many discoveries. She found an old bird's nest and a baby rabbit, but she had no one to share these with. She missed her brother and wished that she had not argued with him. Tears spilled from her eyes and fell onto the ground and the small bushes at her feet. She decided she must turn back and find her brother. She looked down the path and was surprised by what she saw. Bright red berries had sprung up wherever her tears had fallen. She tasted one and found it sweet, a gift from the great spirit, she thought. She filled her basket with berries to give her brother. The two found each other again and they shared the berries. Now, whenever people eat strawberries, they must forgive and forget. That is the way to thank the great spirit for the gift of the strawberries. The drums began and the children hurried up the path to the ceremonial circle. Adam took the stone from his pocket and, thinking of the meaning of Strawberry Thanksgiving, he handed it to Holly. At the circle, the men entered on the right and the women entered on the left. Their feet in soft moccasins kept step with the drum and the singers. As Holly and Adam danced around the circle, they heard their grandmother's drum. One, two, one, two, the heartbeat of Mother Earth. The end. So what did you think of that book? I really like that story. Strawberry Thanksgiving is one of my favorite celebrations. I want to share some information with you all about strawberries. Okay, let's see if I can pull it up on my screen again so you can see. Here it is. Strawberries. So strawberry in the Narragansett language is Wuta Munyash. It actually translates to heartberry. Wuta is our word for heart or his heart and berry is mun in the language. So when you put it together you got Wuta Munyash. Um, sorry I said that wrong. Wuta Munyash. And This is a picture of a badge from the Tomaquag Museum, and you can see all of the strawberries in the background. I have this video that I made this morning, and this is my son, Nikus, and he's gonna show you our strawberry plants. 
Hi, I'm Nikos. Nikos is going to help me show you our strawberries. So, Kus, can you point out where the strawberry plants are? Yeah. They're, in, they're that little thing and they grow big. And when the petals fall off, and there's no room for the petals. Okay. So, yes, these are our strawberry plants. They're beautiful and green, and they have these really pretty flowers on it. See that nice white flower? Yeah. And in the middle of that flower, you see that little yellow part? Yeah. yeah. That right on top, right there. That's actually the strawberry. And what will happen is as that gets bigger, these petals are going to fall off, and you'll be left with nothing but that strawberry, that yellow part that's inside. And that will get bigger, and it will turn green, and it will look like a green strawberry. And but then, then later... Turns, but then it turns flesh. It turns and, red, right? It turns flesh into a red one. It turns into a red strawberry, nice and fresh. And it's going to be delicious. Here's another one here. These are going to be all strawberries next month. Everywhere where you see a flower, it's going to be a strawberry next month. Oh, we can't wait, huh? Yeah, I can't wait until the strawberries go. So I'm going to share this time. You're going to share this time? Yeah, I'm going to eat one, and when another one is eaten, and another one, and another one, I'll eat an another one. Okay, good sharing. Okay, okay thank I'm you, Nikos. Thank You're you, Kuz, for showing us and the this strawberries. And acorn is for... He wanted to start teaching you about acorns. But we'll save that for another time. Let's give it a minute and it will return to our presentation so that I can show you a little bit about wild versus cultivated strawberries. So wild strawberries are these ones over here. And these are naturally occurring in nature. Nobody planted these, they just grew. They are a gift from Mother Earth. And wild strawberries are really a lot smaller, um, probably about the size of a dime. Whereas cultivated strawberries, these are the kinds that we grow in gardens. And what that means when you take, when something is cultivated is they took something that was wild and they started to care for it and grow it in a certain way. And the way that you tend it and the way that you grow it, and sometimes they even crossbreed with other types of um, plants, it changes the strawberry. And that's why the cultivated strawberries that we have today are so much bigger. They're about the size of a golf ball compared to the wild strawberries. Here's another little video that you can watch that shows the progression of the growth of a strawberry. Now I'm gonna share this with you guys and it's going to be on our, in our resources on our face um, on our website, so that you can check it out yourself. It takes you to a YouTube video that shows the progression of a strawberry growing. It's really cool to watch, so I really advise you to check it out. Oh, I went too fast. Sorry. So wild strawberry plants can be found all over um, North America, South America, Europe, Asia. Um, the strawberries that we have today, these cultivated versions, they're actually a cross of two species that were native to North America. So the strawberries that most people eat now are um, bred from species of wild strawberries that grew here in North America. Um, there's lots of different varieties. Wild ones can be found in woodlands and in meadows, but if you go over to the Pacific Coast, you can even find them on beaches and sand dunes. Um, the ones that grow on the Pacific Coast, they're a little bit bigger than the wild ones that grow here, and some people say they kind of taste like pineapples. I've never tried one, but that would be really cool. Uh, Strawberry plants prefer moist climates. They like cool, moist climates, but they can grow in warmer climates as long as there's enough moisture. So if it's hot, they can still grow, but they got to have a lot of moisture because they, they like water. Um, they need a lot of water to grow. Um, the wild ones are much sweeter, but also much smaller than the cultivated ones. And strawberries grow 
and spread on their own. They don't really require a lot of farming. In fact, those ones in that video that we just showed you that I made in my yard, we planted them a few years ago and they come back every year and we never have to do anything. They just keep coming back and they keep spreading and making more plants every year. So that's a really cool plant to have. So strawberries were a really important food source for native people. They're an excellent source of vitamin C, and you can even dry them and store them so that they can last you all year round. Um, here's a fun fact about strawberries um, and strawberry leaves. They could even be used um, to clean teeth. They're one of the first fruits to ripen in early summer. Um, June is usually in our area, it's our strawberry moon. It's when they're ready. And um, that's when we would celebrate. This page has a lot of resources of different native foods um, that you can make from strawberries. Um, and I included some links to recipes so that you can try them. And some beverages that you can make. Um, and don't forget about the leaves. People always cut off the leaves and the stems of the strawberries, but they're actually edible and they're good for you. They have a lot of iron and antioxidants and vitamin C and K, so you don't throw them away. You can actually use the leaves to make a tea. Um, you can throw them into your smoothie and let it grind it all up and drink it. Um, if you're making a soup, you can throw the strawberry tops with the leaves and the stem into the soup and let it flavor your food. Um, so there's lots of things that you can still do with those, with those leaves and stems. You don't wanna get rid of good food that's healthy for your body. Um, strawberry leaves are actually medicinal. Uh, the plants could be used for medicine, um, really good for your stomach. It's a natural digestive aid. So it was used to treat stomach aches and nausea and anytime your stomach was bothering you. Um, it was really good for that. So you can still use them too. So June is the month of the strawberry moon and native people would gather to celebrate the harvest of this fruit in a big celebration that we called Strawberry Thanksgiving. And they would hold ceremony and they would thank the creator for the gift of the strawberry. And then there would be fun and games and feasting and dancing and all kinds of entertainment. And we still have Strawberry Thanksgiving every year at Tom McQuag Museum. And we still do all of the things that we used to do a long time ago. We have music and dance. We wear our special regalia. Um, we play games. There's vendors that come and they sell their artwork. Um, we, all, we, just, we just come together to have a good time. Unfortunately, because of COVID-19, we can't have Strawberry Thanksgiving this year, um, but we're trying to find out other, figure out other ways that we can still celebrate. And we hope that you come and join us for Strawberry Thanksgiving next year at the museum. This is some materials from our archives at the Tomaquag Museum about Strawberry Thanksgiving. So in the corner, we have a picture of Tall Oak and Princess Redwing. This is pictures from 1960. And Princess Redwing is one of the founders of our museum. And Tall Oak Whedon was a tribal member and they worked together to educate the public about our traditions and our culture. And right under that photo of them is a little handwritten note of the schedule for the strawberry Thanksgiving for that day. Who was gonna do the greeting? Who was gonna do a welcome dance? What would happen next? Um, so it's really cool to kind of see the notes from what they used to do back then and see that we still do those kind of things today. In the middle, this typewritten sheet of paper was written by the executive director of the Tomaquag Museum. Her name was Ava Butler. And this was back in 1961, and she worked alongside Princess Redwing. The two of them founded the museum together. Now, Ava Butler wasn't a Native woman. She was non-Native, but she supported Native people, um, and she wanted to help them to be able to share their culture and their traditions from their own point of view. And she was, um, she was one of the first in our communities to really empower the Narragansett people to share their culture through um, the opening of a museum. And this piece of paper right here um, is a write-up that she did about the strawberry Thanksgiving that they were going to have at Tomaquag Museum. And this was back in 1961. 
And this photograph over in the corner is a photograph from Strawberry Thanksgiving at Tamaquag Museum back in 1960 and some of the traditional dances they were sharing there. So it's really cool to look back in our archives and bring out this old material. That's why museums are so important. They store all of our information and, and photographs and memories so that we can have them for many years to come and share them with future generations. So because strawberries were so important in our community, they're often featured in our art. The strawberry represents love, it represents forgiveness, it represents happiness. It can even represent renewal because as one of the first fruits of the season, um, it's everything's coming back for the year, everything's starting to grow again. So it's like everything's returning. Um, they're good luck to have. It's, um, it's thought of as a blessing to give strawberries to others and, and things that are decorated with strawberries. Um, it's like giving someone a blessing. So you often find it on different pieces of artwork and different things that Native people will make. Um, these are such just a few examples of things, some things um, that have featured the strawberry in art. Um, and they're used as a way to bless others. So um, strawberries can be given and exchanged and eaten and shared at special occasions birthdays and graduations and weddings and when you have your first child these are all ways that um these are all things that you're celebrating and sharing strawberries um is a way of kind of sharing those blessings and that happiness and that joy and that love so i have a recipe for you guys to try and it's very simple it's called strawberry moon tea and it's delicious it's fun to make, it's very easy to make. You don't need a lot of things to do it. I'm gonna share this on our website um, in our resources so that you can try it out. We did this at Children's Hour last year and all you have to do is take a bunch of strawberries and you're gonna chop them up as small as you can. The more strawberries you have, the more delicious your drink is gonna be. So the more the merrier. So take all of those strawberries, you chop them up really small, and then when they're nice and small, you're going to mash them. And you want to mash them as much as possible, because the more you mash them, the more juices that come out. When you have them all well mashed and really smooth and pureed, um, you're going to throw them into a pitcher, and then you're going to add water. You can add ice too if you like it cold, um, but you're going to add your water. and the less water you add, uh, the more strawberry taste you're gonna get. But if you wanna make more to serve a lot more people, you can add more water. If the strawberries were really good and ripe, you don't even need to add anything to sweeten it. It can taste good just by itself. But if you have a little bit of a sweet tooth, or if the strawberries weren't too ripe and you want a little bit more sweetness, then you can add some maple syrup, or some honey, or some agave nectar, or even just some regular sugar and you stir that all up into the pitcher with water and strawberries. And that's it. You're done and it's ready to be served. We got to make this last year as a group and it was really delicious. So I hope that you'll try it. And if you do, please share a video of you making it or pictures of how it turned out. Let me know what you think. Maybe you'll um, change the recipe a little bit and make it your own and try something new, adding different berries to it. Um, you can also put the strawberry leaves in and let the nutrients from the strawberry leaves feed into that water and then drink it that way. Let me know what you do and I'd be really happy to hear how you liked it. So here are some resources that I have to share with you where you can learn more about strawberries, um, how strawberries were used for traditional health in Native communities, more cultural information, of the importance of strawberries in our community and some more traditional stories about um, strawberries from other tribal communities that you can check out. So I hope that you have enjoyed our children's hour today. I hope that you go and grab some strawberries. It's a great time to buy some plants and get them in your garden 
Um, they probably won't give you much strawberries this year, but by next year and the year after, it just gets better and better every year. And again, you don't have to do much to farm them. They just kind of take over and grow on their own. So they're a really cool and easy plant to kind of um, get into your garden. So now's a good time for that. And next month, we'll be celebrating celebrating strawberry thanksgiving and i hope that you grab some strawberries and share them with your loved ones and enjoy them and let me see what you've um you've done this week and i hope you'll join me next week for another children's hour program let's see if i know what i'm doing to end <laughs> All right, if you have any questions or if there's anything you want to show me or talk to me about, feel free to send me an email. Um, I always include my email address in the caption and I'd love to hear from you and see what you've done. So I hope you have a good week. Pishkanashni tam.